Well, good morning. Welcome to the Fishy Fins channel, and today we're going to talk a little bit about algae scrubbers. Now, algae scrubbers are kind of in the same line of refugiums. Uh, we mainly use them to take some of the organic matter out of the water column, generally when we're feeding, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, an excessive amount of fish in a coral tank. Now, the reasoning behind that is, is for most of us, when we first get into the hobby, um, we have big plans. So we want to get a nice tank. Usually we start out small, right? So we start with a cube or something, then we add our corals and they look pretty. We add some fish, they look really nice. So we want more corals, we want more fish. So we kind of start getting a little bit crazy. Now, when we start adding too much uh, livestock to the tank, the bio load on the tank gets to get higher and higher and higher. We're importing nutrients, we're importing waste matter because the fish are eating and they're pooping. So we need an export that'll keep up with what we're importing into the tank. The smaller the tank, the more overloaded the tank is, the more of an export machine we're going to need to get those nutrients and those waste products out of the water column. So most people start getting into algae scrubbers and refugiums. And they do that because when we start adding all that extra food and all the extra fish poop and everything that ends up in the water, what happens, of course, algae starts growing. So we start considering the results of that. We want the algae out. We don't want to keep having to pull the algae out by hand. We don't want to keep having to chemically flush out the tank with different types of chemical algae cleaners. We want a natural method. So putting in a refugium or an algae scrubber can be very advantageous if you begin to get to that point in your tank when you have so many fish, so much livestock, that it may be importing way too much organic matter and your export isn't quite meeting, uh, meeting your demand. When that happens, your nitrates go up, your phosphates go up, and your corals start to suffer. Do the fish care? Not really. The fish are just fine. It's when your corals and your fish are together and you start loading up the fish and the bio load gets a little bit much that the corals start to suffer. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about algae scrubbers today, not refugiums. Refugiums are a lot more, uh, lot more aggressive than a scrubber is, but they basically do the same thing. We're using a type of algae to export naturally the waste products in the water column that we need to get rid of so our nitrates and our phosphates start coming down. So the first thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about a product from Brightwell Aquatics. It's called uh, Cato Grow. So let me turn on our second monitor here. Let me turn this tank view off. And this uh, Cato Grow is a wonderful product, and you'll see it in most people's aquariums next to their aquarium that are running a refugium because Cato Grow will give your refugium and the macroalgae in the refugium, uh, for the most part, uh, Cato algae, what it needs to grow. Now, when you look down here, it'll tell you the, uh, the, the, the different ions that it's putting in the system and the elements. It's adding potassium, boron, carbon, calcium, chlorine, iron, manganese, magnesium, nickel, sulfur, zinc. It adds just about everything other than phosphorus and nitrogen, the phosphates and nitrates that we don't want to be in there, of course. It puts in everything that that chato algae needs to grow, less the phosphate and the nitrate. It absorbs that from your water column. So if you're running, a, let's say, a refugium or a very aggressive algae scrubber that has a lot of algae growing inside of the scrubber, you may be pulling all of these um, ions out of the water. You need these elements. Um, so what will end up happening is you'll end up getting an ICP test done. You're, you have a zero or an untraceable amount of these trace elements. And you'll see your gonies, your gonial pore will stop opening up. Um, you may have some other softies that don't extend so much anymore. Most of the softies, as always, the gonies, they really like a little bit of nitrate in their water. So if your, your numbers get below five, get down to one or below in nitrates, they start to suffer. So you end up starting to dose. So what this is, is about is not just about the scrubbers themselves and what can work, but the danger sometimes if you get a little bit too aggressive in scrubbing or in a refugium and you start stripping all of these, uh, these trace elements out of the water, then you have to use a product like Trace from Seachem or... You may have to add nitrate, you may have to add phosphate to your water. And, and that'll happen if you get a little bit too aggressive. See, I do use uh, Cato Grow myself, it's a great product. Um, I grow and I sell Cato algae by the tons. So it is a wonderful product and I can tell you firsthand that if you start a refugium and you're not using the Cato Grow in your refugium, you're probably stripping all the trace elements that your corals need out of your tank. 
So you'll be wondering why your numbers look great, but your gonies just won't open. That's probably why. So if your nitrates get down to below about five, 10, right in there, uh, gonies start to do bad. So you have to be careful when you're, do, uh, when you're using a scrubber or a refugium. So we're gonna talk about the scrubbers because it's the less aggressive of the two options. Now I say that because if you're running a mixed reef tank and you really like those corals and you want those coral pieces to live along with your fish, those, um, the refugiums are very aggressive. So unless you're gonna get into that refugium and cut all of that algae out of there once a week and get that, that algae ball of Cato down to a small size, it is really gonna strip a lot of stuff out. So just, just to tell you, you'll end up buying a refugium, buying the Cato algae to go into it. You'll buy the chemicals to keep the, the, the Cato or the Cato algae fresh and growing. And then you'll end up having to add nitrate and phosphate just to keep up with, with that uh, Cato algae is stripping out of the system because your corals need that. So you kind of end up building a beast to control one thing and then you have to fill that beast and feed it and feed it because it's doing too good of a job. So for most situations, you're probably gonna be better off with just an algae scrubber. And, and to, before we get into those again, uh, just remember that the algae scrubbers themselves are very effective at, at taking these chemicals out of the water, nitrate, phosphate, and other organic matter. Um, but at the same time, you have to maintain them. So they have to be clean weekly, they have to be maintained, and, uh, and you still have to do that ICP test to make sure that your scrubber isn't over aggressively taking all these elements out of the water. So let's take a look at a couple of them. First, we're gonna look at the ones that are external. These ones are mounted outside of your sump. Generally, you need to plumb them. Uh, so you have to add some piping, some plumbing. You may need to add a pump to it in order to pump the water up to the scrubber. So let's take a look at a couple of these. We're going to actually um, aquariumspecialty.com. They got a great deal right now, 14% off. You gotta go ahead and click on the link below and you'll get a huge discount on your first order and a couple of orders after that. So the first one we're gonna look at is Adaptive Reach, algae uh, turf scrubber. Now, Adaptive Reef was one of the first ones on the market. And it uses you know, a very large light on the side and the bigger ones, I think they come up to like 300 watt lights or something and they put doubles and quad lights on them. So they are very powerful. If you have a big tank, they do a great job of scrubbing the algae out. They also have multiple um, perforated screens in them. So while well, you could put up to two or three screens in each one and grow a line of algae on each one of those screens as those lights come on and off, you have control of the lights on a timer. Um, it's really a nice big, uh, I, I'd say almost commercial grade algae scrubber because they are big and they really need to be mounted someplace either on top of the sump or someplace on the side. The downside about all the externals is that they do have a high profile like this one. So if you don't have enough room on the top of your tank, between, I should say, between the top of your sump and the bottom of your tank, this might be kind of hard to work in with. But you have to take the top off, you have to be able to slide these screens out, clean them, put them back in, put the top back on. So in that case, if you have it mounted under the sump, maybe a little bit hard to work with, you're better off putting, putting it on the side on the shelf and just run the plumbing for it. So it's really a nice system for 500 bucks and they go up to about, I believe, oh, around seven or 800, uh, 773 for the bigger ones. It's not a bad system. If you have a big tank, we're talking about maybe a 150 to 500 gallon tank, and then you could get into these big boys that'll keep up with that. Now the second line, the Tunzi, is a nice one that's also an external. It's a reactor type of microalgae, a grower, and it's a little bit unique compared to uh, the other one. Um, this one is, is all built into a round column. The light is inside of it. The algae goes inside of it. Let me go ahead and click on this so you can see it. The algae grows inside of that little tube. And then there's a pump that goes into your sump. Now this one does come with the pump. It goes down into your sump. It does pump the water out. It runs through that reactor and then flows back into your sump again. So the good part about it, it is very convenient, compact. Everything is in one package wired together. Um, easy to use, and I'd say it's more applicable to something like a, a cube, a smaller tank, and I say that only because those reactors are hard to get into. And if, you're, if you ever had a, a Cato algae reactor or a Cato algae refugium, that stuff grows fast. So once a week or more, you'll have to take that thing apart and cut out some of that algae and throw it in the garbage just so that it doesn't plug up the, uh, the reactor. Also, when you have a reactor flowing like that, you end up with a lot of debris, waste product inside the reactor, inside the Chato algae, 
Um, it could pick up some, some messy stuff and get dirty and be a little difficult to clean. Uh, so you constantly would have to take it apart and clean it to do all this stuff. Now, if I had a small cube, something like either a nano or a cube or maybe up to a 32 gallon cube, I definitely consider this as a, uh, a nice option to use as, a, as an algae scrubber. Now, this is again, uh, this is comparing it to a, a reactor and a scrubber and a refugium. Um, this is, I'm, I'm putting this in with the scrubbers because I would not call this a refugium, uh, only because it cannot grow out past that reactor and is very limited in the amount of room that you have to grow in. If it was an open air refugium where you could tumble it and pull it apart and, and work with it, sure. Um, but it's not. It's a closed system. It would be considered a closed loop system that you had to constantly take apart the way you would a scrubber and maintain it on a weekly basis. So, and that's why we're talking about these with the scrubbers, and we're not going to include these reactors with refugiums in our next video. So, the external ones are nice. So, the problem is you have to plumb them. They have to have a separate pump. Um, they have to, there's a chance of overflow and dripping when you have something coming out of your sump and then being plumbed back into it. So there's a little extra work and maintenance. However, they do a good job and these are the external ones. Now let's refocus on the internals. So we're gonna to go to the Ice Cap Pro. Again, you can get this as aquarium specialties and it's 14% discount right now if you order it. Now this one is my personal favorite. Uh, the Ice Cap Pro in some turf scrubber is built well. I mean, it, it's heavy duty. Um, it has a, uh, a, a nice little ball valve on the side. It has a union on the top, so you can take this whole top rack completely off it when you take the cover off. Um, when you take the cover off, that rack comes off with the screens that hang from that rack that are easy to clean and easy to get to. And as you can see from the sump here, the level of the top is level with the top of the sump, so it's very easy, plenty of room to work in. So you can clean those off, slide them right back in, put the cover on with no problem. Um, the design itself is super easy and nice, plenty of water flow. There's a rack that sits down into the sump and makes it easy to place in the sump. It's squared off and pretty tight. Uh, now you have an option of actually uh, three different options with these and they go up to about 600 bucks. So you're looking at a 14, a 29 and a 36 watt. And if you look at the, at really the amount of um, aquarium that it'll cover, this one is set up for up to a 350 gallon aquarium on the large one and up to 100 gallons on the small one. So for the price, it's wonderful. I've used these ones quite a few times on two different tanks. Very easy to use, very easy to work with, very easy to clean, and you can take the whole thing out and remove very quickly the pump. Again, a quick connect, and the pump comes right off by a union, and clean everything very quickly and put it right back in the, in the sump. So now there's also some options for in sumps that are a little bit cheaper. Let's take a look at this Santa Monica filtration one, the next one. Um, this is pretty cool. Now, what Santa Monica Filtration did was they made the drop-in upflow algae scrubber. And it sounds like a lot of verbiage, but it's very easy. It's a box that has perforated sides on it. It has an LED light that goes into the box that has all kinds of ends of lights on it. It has a couple of, uh, an airline, I should say, an airline that goes into it that allows water to circulate through the little box. And it very quickly and easily throws algae inside the box. You can take it out every couple of weeks and just give it a good cleaning with a toothbrush, pull the algae out of it. You can even spray it out with peroxide if you want to, then rinse it off and drop it right back in your refugium. It's ready to go again. Uh, very easy to use, very easy to clean, very straightforward, all low voltage, so you're really using a low voltage system. And look how small this thing is. Three and a quarter by six by two and three quarter. Uh, small little guy. But it does require at least five inches of water to operate in. So whether you're putting it in a refugium on a, let's say, a 70-gallon a tank or into a bio cube uh, back in all in one, something like that, make sure you have enough room to slide it in there. And it will fit inside of a lot of those all-in-one chambers that go in the back. So I think it's a really nice system uh, for the money. And if you look, they don't have a drop down here, but I believe there's about five different sizes of the Santa Monica filtration drop-in. And they cover everything from a 50 gallon tank up to a 300 gallon tank. So it's very easy, very simple to use. And I like simplicity and it works well. So, you know, again, these, these algae scrubbers are great to use. Um, I, I just another heads up on these algae scrubbers and how new you are to the, uh, the reef uh, hobby. If your tank is less than four months old, you really shouldn't be looking at algae scrubbers or refugiums to 
to fix any problems you're having with algae right now. You have to remember that if you're new to the to the hobby and you're setting up your new tank, the rock site you put in there, even the rubble, even even the, the substrate, it has to cure. And the larger rocks you put in there, whether they're shelf rocks, whether they're the base rocks, whatever they are, whether they're live, dry, they have to cure. And even if they did come out of water and somebody said they're cured, I guarantee you when you put it in your tank and you wait a couple of months, even more of the ions, organic matter, um, all kinds of elements in those rocks that are going to start participating out. And as they participate out of the rock, algae is going to grow because algae grows on exactly that stuff that's coming out of the rocks. So you could put as many refugiums in, these scrubbers in, to try to control that algae on your startup tank. And all you're doing is spending money and prolonging the inevitable. You're still going to have to wait for those rocks to cure. And a refugium and an algae scrubber is not going to prevent that from happening. You're going to have to deal with it. It takes a little bit of time. It's worth the patience. However, once you get up to the point where your tank is six months old or more, then you're going to see that these uh, small refugiums and even more importantly, these scrubbers, these scrubbers do a fantastic job of keeping the algae under control so that your rocks have time to allow coralline algae to grow on their surface and you don't have to worry about algae, green algae growing on there and preventing the coralline algae from really covering those rocks nicely. It also gives your, 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 um, your new frags time to really uh, encrust onto the rocks without having to fight with algae and, and the byproducts of algae and, and some of the goop that it causes. So anyway, I hope this helps you. Again, you can go to uh, aquariumspecialty.com, get a great discount right now, click the link below. And these algae scrubbers are awesome. If you get into a refugium, we got a video coming up talking specifically about those. Um, they're, they're a beast of their own discipline. So refugiums, if you've got, if you've got a big tank and you've got a mixed reef tank and you've got a lot of fish in there and you want corals also, uh, and you want to do the SPS corals with fish, you're probably going to have to have a refugium just to keep up on feeding the fish, the fish byproduct and waste, the cleaning crew associated with the fish, and of course, the import export of organics and, and waste matter that, that coincides with having a tank with a lot of fish. And I always say when we talk about refugiums, you probably have more fish in the tank than the tank is really designed to, to accommodate. So the refugium kind of gives you a little more working room to get more fish in and, and export that waste matter. We'll talk about in the next video again from Fishy Fins. We appreciate you watching the channel. Please support us by clicking those links below and have a most wonderful day. We will see you in your reef tanks. Bye-bye now.